Hi everyone, welcome to another Ask Edgar episode of the Edgar Natalo Show, where we talk business, lifestyle, social media, anything you want to ask me. Today we've got Andrew Ridgeway, who's doing a business management course, Ask Me Some Questions via video. Let's take a look and let's answer them. All right, your first question, what is my main line of business? Now, for, for your course, let's stick to one thing, which is real estate. That's where I started off, was in the real estate business. Obviously, obviously, over the years, you start expanding, you start leveraging off into other businesses and other things that you like. So we now have a promotions business that does media and promotions, events. Um, I've got a social media management business, um, new homes and things like that and renovating. So there's quite a few other things I've added to my plate. Let's stick to real estate because that is gonna be a fun topic. What is your main role as the manager of your business? I see my main role as someone that guides the rest of the team to achieve their goals. So my main goal obviously is to keep the, the business running at a profit, making sure that things keep continually start improving and that every year is better than the year beforehand. That basically, you know, we run a really good business and our service levels are high and everyone gets remunerated and we all make a profit and go home and achieve our own goals. But as a business manager, I want to make sure that everyone in my team achieves what they want to do in life. My main goal as a manager is making sure that they achieve their goals because in the way I see business is if I can help them achieve their goals, that in turn will help me achieve mine. So that's my role as a business manager. Do you employ additional managers? If so, what are their roles? Absolutely. There is no way, I think when you start off, you can, you know, there's only a one or two or three person team in my, most small businesses because that's the way they have to start off to make sure that they're viable. As you start growing though, if you really want to grow at scale, you need to understand it's a numbers game, right? So you start doing more transactions, talk to more people, get more things, you know, talk to more people about houses, talk to more people about renting their houses. So as you start growing, the only way to keep a track of how everything's, you know, progressing and making sure that all the service level is still the same is to actually employ other managers to help individual teams um, within the office. So for real estate, absolutely. We've got a, I've got a property manager. So on that side, it means that the property manager controls and oversees everything to do with renting properties out for our clients. So those people that want to just rent their house out and have us manage the rental, um, she looks after those and she looks after the maintenance team and everyone that does um, the property management. Um, in the sales side, everyone's got like little teams as well and they do, um, you know, I take care of the sales team as well and I make sure that everyone on that side progresses the way that they want to do. They're basically doing the work that they need to do. They're reaching their KPIs, their key performance indicators, and that they're on track to achieve whatever goal they want and also help the business grow as well. I've got a marketing manager um, who's Brit. Brit does all our marketing. So she does branding, uh, magazines, uh, logos, everything like that is, is into a marketing management team. So Brit does our marketing and um, yeah, and, and she controls that side of it. So I have a little bit of an input, but for, to make sure that the business grows, I've got to basically release myself and not micromanage and let things grow on a macro level. So, you know, let them um, do what they think is right because they're the specialists. I'm, I employ them, they're on my team because they're good at what they do. So, Britt does whatever she thinks has to get done to make sure the branding um, and marketing does well. And, you know, Vanessa in property management, she makes sure that she oversees and does everything that she needs to do. And obviously consults with me but they basically, on their own level, make sure that the, that stuff grows. So I fully trust them and it's really important to have somebody that you can trust. What type of staff are being supervised in your organisation? For example, old, new or untrained? I've got a variety of people. I really do have a variety of people. I'm at a level though because I want to achieve so much at a fast rate that I can't have too many untrained people. Um, I'm just not geared up for the day day to day one on one type of thing because I don't have the time to do that and it's totally unfair um, for me to you know take on untrained people and not give them that kind of stuff that I would want to be guided on and mentored on. So I do have a few people that are new to the industry that have got some experience. I've got some older people that have been in this for you know 20, 30 years. Um, they do fantastic. I've got people that have been in here for one or two years and um, and, and some are highly skilled, some are, are you know, partially skilled and I've got to train them up as well and, and just add on to this so they can achieve their goals. Um, and then for, for other things like marketing, I've got, a, um, I've got Alex that does our videos and um, he's highly, highly skilled, I don't have to do anything. You know, that guy knows more about his craft than I do. So 
that's where the whole, you know, letting people do the best that they can in their roles and not micromanage people um, really comes in. So I've got a variety of people across the board, just not that many unskilled. We try to, um, we try to get people that know what they're doing because then they can support each other and that really does help the business grow. What would you consider as your preferred style of managing? My preferred, well, there's no preferred because the way that I see it is everyone's got a different personality. So um, a, a lot of people that come and work here take a personality test so I can understand if they're extroverted, introverted, if they're a, like a thinking type of person, if they're just an action type of person. Um, everyone's got different kinds of personality skills. And I think it's really important in business that you make sure you don't hire people as a, as a manager or the owner of a business, you don't hire people that are exactly the same as you. Because obviously if you want things to grow, if you want ideas to flow, if you want a bit of brainstorming, they can't all be the same as me. So I need people that think differently, that act differently, that have different attitudes. So therefore that also means in a culture type of way, that I've got people that I've got to you know, consult and guide along the way. Um, I've got people who are, I've got to persuade into doing things. Um, I've got people that are participative and you know, they want to see one-on-one -on -one type of action. So there is no one type of management style. I think it's super important and a business will probably go out of, you know, they'll be out of, out of profit, they'll be out of business, they'll have no customers or no staff if the business manager cannot adapt to every kind of personality that they've got. Super important because you cannot, and I think this is important in schools too, you cannot teach someone or guide someone or mentor someone exactly the same way for everybody. Some people have audio, so like so a learning skill. Some people are audio. Some people are visual. They need to see things. Some people need to be guided and they've got to you know, basically hold their hand along the way until they get the confidence to do so. So every type of person is different and I modify every type of you know, modify, modify it for every type of person. Same as our clients, when we, um, on the real estate side now we're talking about it, when I go and talk to someone about selling their houses, I've got people that are introverted and quiet and I've got to basically replicate that kind of mannerism. Then I've got the loud, happy, joyful people and you know, I've got to replicate that and be loud, happy and joyful. So I think I've learned to adapt my personality to make others feel comfortable by being on the same level as them. Why do you think this style works best? I think that's a life skill that anyone has to have, not even in business, but you just have to adapt to people, talk their style, talk their language, talk their pace, and, um, and that's how you basically get across to others, and that's how people feel comfortable with you, is when you're basically on the same level, thinking the same way. How do you think this management style gets the best out of your employees? Because by adapting to the way that they feel that they need to be trained, or you know, guided, or mentored, or um, just you know be around by adapting it to that way that basically gives them positivity that encourages them that gives them the confidence to do what they want to do and basically they don't get frustrated because they start learning and understanding because you're using their style that um, you know that, that that's good with them that's comfortable with them that that helps them understand so you have to adapt 100% you have to adapt have you experimented with any other styles of management in your career and if so has it been successful? I've, like I said, I, I try every single style because I adapt to other people. But there is one style that is just not me, it doesn't fit with me. Um, that's the, you know, the aggressive, demanding, hard down the line, um, force people to do things, um, you know, just that, like that threatening type of stuff. Um, it's just not my style. And if you, start, if you do a bit of research, you'll see that Steve Jobs from Apple, he, he, you know, amazing person, and he achieved some goals, except in Silicon Valley, if you actually start doing a bit of research in Silicon Valley, he is known for treating his staff like crap. He like he really he was hard nosed, hard assed. You know, down just get things done. There's no excuses. Um, so that kind of thing where you treat your staff like crap and just and they're just on the edge all the time. That's just not my style. My style is more like Richard Branson style. It's easy going fun, you know, positive, just having some fun and, and encouraging people along the way. I just can't do that aggressive, hard down the line, this is the way you do it or you get out. Um, and that's obviously Steve Jobs style and it works fantastic for him, but that just doesn't fit with me. So that's one style that I just can't do. Um, you know, because you have to live in the office and, and work with the team line nine, eight hours of your day. That's a big time of your day and a big part of your life. So I want to make sure that everyone's comfortable and you just bring out the best in people by nurturing them and being encouraging. Have you had to use more than one type of management style? Absolutely. Every day, all day. As when I do my one-on-one -on -one walks around, so it's, it's called, 
Management by walking around is, is the term. Um, so when I walk around and I talk to each staff member, hey, how are you doing? Is there anything I can help you with today? Um, any, any issues? When I do that, my, my approach and the way that I talk to people is, is completely different to every single type of staff member. So yeah, I, I use a different kind of style every single second of every day with every person that I talk to because I adapt to the way that, the way that they are. If you were advising young business people on managing styles, what would your advice be? Is that obviously you've got to be yourself, right? You've, you've got to you're going to have a style that, that's yourself. Some people are introverted, some people are extroverted, some people are overconfident, some people aren't confident. Um, obviously, if you're not confident, you can't be a manager because you've got to be someone that the staff, the team, your business looks up to. You've got to be a leader because there's a famous saying, and I don't even know who said it, but the, the saying goes like this: a business will never outpace its leader. So it will only grow. Like this business will only grow as fast as I grow. And once it reaches the same skill level, thought pattern, mindset as me, that's where it's going to stop. So I'm consistently learning. I'm consistently researching. I'm consistently adapting my skills, increasing my skills, and learning new things myself every day, listening to podcasts, listening to videos, reading books. My style changes every single week. And the person that I am today in 2018 is completely different to the person I was in 2017 and completely different to the person I was in 2016. Because for me, I have to grow in order for my business to grow. And I have to grow in order for my staff to grow. Because if I'm teaching them and mentoring them, they will only basically get to the level that I can teach. And if there's stuff that I don't know, I can't give them their skills so that, so that they can achieve their goals. So it's super, super important for me to let everyone else know that's younger than me or older than me or anyone that's in business is this one big thing, is that the management style that you are going to adapt for yourself has to be true to yourself, but also understanding the different types of, types of personalities that there are and how you can effectively encourage, be positive and nurture those types of personalities. Because obviously someone that's overly extroverted can't have an overly introverted manager because it'll be too shy and they're like, come on, come on, come on. And if someone's overly introverted, I can't be over there, you know, go at them and be super excited and, and stuff like that because that's not their style. So I've got to tone it down a little bit so they can do it. If someone's visual, I've got to show them examples. If someone's audio, um, I've got to basically, you know, give them audio stuff and talk to them and, and give them that kind of guidance. So I think to be effective, you've got to be yourself but you also have to understand how everyone else works, how their minds work. Everything in business and in, in, in life is about people. And you have to understand how they think, how they react, and what encourages them. And that I think makes the best managers is someone that wants to bring out the best in someone. So if, if you're like that, you're a fantastic manager. Um, and that's what you're gonna look up to. Thank you so much for the questions. Um, don't forget to follow me on every part of social media. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you guys soon.